My name is Sean Overton and I am turning this into a desert forest. And the way I'm doing it in this episode is check dams combined with my baby dozer. I realized that my central wash has tons and tons of gravel in it. And about two years ago, we did an experiment building a gabion in the middle of the wash with the help of some volunteers that ultimately washed out. And we learned some lessons along the way. One of them being that this gravel is very movable for a dozer this size. Going through my opportunities and knowing that the rainy season is coming up, I realized, you know what, May's here. We're on the cusp of the monsoon season in West Texas. Let's go ahead and get a couple of these made with a dozer and see if we can make this a scalable and repeatable strategy, at least in this watershed. And much thanks to Jay, my super volunteer, who did a lot of the legwork figuring out whether I was allowed to dig here or not. But let's make some check dams. The first obstacle is gonna be getting the dozer in the wash. I had, I don't even have a road over here, so I had to take the dozer off-road to make this happen. And there's a little cliff here. It's only like three feet or so. Enough that it's awkward to get down. I'm gonna walk around the long ways to show you all. And then you'll watch me build a ramp to get down here. And unfortunately, Roads do require removing some vegetation, so necessary evil. And we ought to be out of the way over here. I wanted it to be as close to my property line as possible, but there's also a, t a huge gap in vegetation starting right here. So that's the advantage of getting off the dozer. Let's make a ramp. That'll work. Now, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna build these things. But first, we gotta travel down to the south side of the property so I don't make weird walls and make it hard to travel. I'm excited to share a short time lapse with you that's shot from the dozer because that gives you an idea of the vegetation and what it's like to drive across the ranch. We're gonna make a stop here at Lone Tree, which now feels like a comical misnomer, but uh, you know, it literally is the only thing resembling a tree on the ranch. So this is where the volunteers and I had to make this giant long trek. And it literally took about 45 minutes to get here with supplies and everything. And now, you just hop in the dozer and it happens. And believe it or not, we've actually had flow events twice since they've built this. And you can see all the debris and detritus that is built up behind it and how gnarly and nasty this gabion is. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. If I want to put the dozer through there, which I really don't think I want to do, because look at my, uh, I called that a poor man's dam and it's worked better than I ever could have imagined. I'll probably come up with the dozer through here and bypass that work because this is already effective and proven. So we got some cattle panels there and then you can see where I threw a bunch of sticks. All of that debris is piled up real nice. Be nice to get those panels back but another day. And what's cool is you can see all the clay on that cliff there. 
And this is the one spot on my ranch where I can stand up in the natural shade. I'm gonna change that. But it's such a cool place here. Let's keep what's working. We're about halfway to the property line. So I will take a little shortcut with the old girl and we'll continue. If you're watching Dust Ups, chances are you value your freedom and your privacy. Probably a little off-grid living. But here's the thing, just because you're off the grid in real life doesn't mean that you're off the grid online. That's why I use NordVPN. Whether I'm uploading videos, checking trail cams, sending videos from the middle of nowhere, I want my internet connection secure and private. NordVPN encrypts my data and masks my location online. No one can track what I'm doing or where I'm doing it. It also protects me on public Wi-Fi if I'm in town working on these episodes. One click and I'm locked in with military grade encryption. But what's special about NordVPN is avoiding the trap doors of the internet. It notifies you if you stumble into a fake online store, if your data is compromised, and it kills malicious ads before you even see them. Right now you can get an extra four months free on the two year plan when you go to NordVPN forward slash dustups. It's risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your connection, protect your freedom, and keep on building your own dustups with NordVPN one click at a time. I mentioned driving off to go build check dams and then as you watch this time lapse you should be wondering what in the ADD is going on because Sean's not building check dams. I have broken down on the dozer many many times and as I felt the pain of being further and further away from my logistics hub I realized eh, maybe it's time to pull the escape hatch and let's make sure that a support vehicle can get to me if something bad happens. And so what I did was, uh, I know my road, my future road plan, and it made sense to just kind of lightly mark the way because I had to make some detours where what I read on the map wasn't really the best path. Some of the elevation changes were a little too steep. So I took a little detour and I think that was a wise use of an hour or two. I'm already here at the support vehicle, the 4300s behind me with 100 gallons of red diesel. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna fuel up and then we'll go build some check dams. That was so little, it wasn't even worth stopping. Many of you watching Dust Ups are watching to take a break from your life. Maybe you have a repetitive job you dislike, maybe there's some family stress that you can't get away from, but where Dust Ups fits in is to just put life on pause and to get away from it all. And what I find sad is that a lot of my viewers are living a life that they find disappointing. When I started Dust Ups, I explicitly told people, don't listen to me for anything that has anything to do with planting or agriculture or bulldozers. The list goes on and on. But you know the one thing where I am an expert, where I have absolutely crushed it and accomplished all of my dreams? This, this project right here, Dust Ups is the embodiment of everything that I sought out to do. Well, we're still working on the desert forest part, but the life and the process is exactly what I mapped out for myself. Not a single bit of this is accidental. I set out to make this happen and I did it. If that sounds like you, that you're living vicariously through me by watching Dust Ups, then I have a longer special message for you. It's gonna take too long to put here in the episode, so you can click the link in the description or scan the QR code that you see on the screen, and I can give you a lot more information about how to live a life that you want. I am curious what y'all think because it doesn't even look like much of anything other than a bunch of dozer tracks. 
But what I did was piled up a whole bunch of loose gravel over there by the bank. You can see how badly incised it is here. So my idea was that let's just armor that bank and armor that bank. And this right here is the low spot. So that's maybe six inches deeper. It's not like a huge difference visually, not definitely not a huge difference visually, but what I'm hoping is that if I make a whole series of these, then uh, it should make a big difference. It should make an enormous difference. Thinking about my total time making this first one was about 10 minutes. And my run time on the dozer is about 50 bucks an hour, including maintenance and fuel and all that. So for five bucks, and I can make how many of these up and down the wash? It's pretty much every time I have space. I can make one. So let's go do another one. Looks good. The banks are protected and that only took eight minutes. And this is the difference. So instead of that wall, now, we got all this gravel protecting it. And the low spot should be somewhere like right here. How about another one? This is the biggest one I built so far. Feel pretty good about that one. It's got a nice slope to it. Uh, I'm gonna knock down in the middle just a little bit. I'm worried about the height, so why worry when you can be sure? And then we'll move on to the next one. When I first started, it didn't seem like much, but now, especially over here where they're bigger, I can see all the bumps. Be curious to see how long this stretches. But, uh, let's check on fluids. We're awesome on hydros. actually over full on the transmission. All right. Whew, what is hot. I think this is a big enough experiment that I've given myself a realistic chance of success. Even in an awful year, this wash still has rain because of those big mountains up there. This is the reason I bought the property. And if we can get just a little bit of that water to slow down and soak in, I think we can put it to good use. But you know what, as I've been digging, I've just seen clay everywhere. And uh, clay is what you use to hold water. Now over on my other dams, I, they're not dams in the sense that most people think of, that I'm not trying to store the water above ground because they don't have clay, but I had a lot of clay here. And uh, maybe it is worth digging a pond in this clay, seeing if we can't catch something. I need to mull it over. Thank you for so much for watching. Make sure you check out the next episode.